I'm live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? So apparently, right as Wrestling Observer Live was going off the air, there were rating. There was a ratings report. I guess uh, NXT got like uh, it wasn't even in the top fifty. And yes, it is. It is other Brian. It is me, Brian Rose. I'm here for FRW Gaming, and as you can see by this giant THQ logo. I'm about to play uh, WCW NWO Revenge. Originally for the N64. I think it's, it's only been on the N64. I don't think there was any other re-release anywhere. So yeah, we are going to play that today. Probably do a Battle Royale first and then see where we go from there. Uh, thank you for... Yeah, I, I do like the logo as well. Um, Tony made that. And I kind of like... Did like a very basic Photoshop to kind of like add to it. So, so that that's the story on the logo. Let me close this blind right here. Close enough. When you get eliminated from the battle royal, you will return as Conan. Okay, that's cool. I like Conan. Let me fix this camera. Okay, that looks better. I even put on a nice shirt. I, I got dressed today. Yeah, you know, it's... Well, when you're stuck in lockdown, you, you really don't... I don't bother putting on nice clothes, but I did today. Because I wanted to impress people. So anyway, here, it, let's start this up. Asmic Ace. Hmm. Let me see this this opening video. Atlanta, Georgia, 1998. Oh, this is a nice cinematic video. Let's look at this. It's a truck. Maybe like a WCW production truck? Oh, uh, maybe like uh, that uh, match with uh, Dustin Rhodes, the uh, Blacktop Bully. Like, what was it called? Like a uh, Roadhouse Rumble match? Bunkhouse Brawl? Uh, I, I forget. Oh, oh, is that who I think it is? A very weird model of Sting? It sure is. <laughs> Oh, this sounds like, uh, this kind of sounds like No Mercy. Yeah, here's the NWO with the spray-painted belt. And I believe, judging by the name on that shirt, it's, uh, Nash, Liz, Bischoff, and Steiner, and yep. And I think that was Goldberg. Live. King of the Road match. I think that was. I think that's what it was called. The match that got them. I think. I, well, I think it got Dustin fired. I don't know if. Uh, I know. Uh, the, the repo man was brought back. I forget. Blacktop Bully. I think that was his name. Then he came back as Hole in One Barry Darso or something. Oh, I think that reflection is supposed to be water. There's a giant Bret Hart Hogan. That is WCW, and <laughs> WCW's like, oh, uh, here's uh, Eddie Guerrero and Chris Jericho, Dean Malenko. Oh, the, the, those are all big time names. La Parka, Air Mysterio, Ultimo Dragon, that guy. Conan, I don't know who that is. I, I, know, I know, okay, Ultimo Guerrero and uh, somebody. There's Buff Bagwell. You can steal taunts, I didn't know that. He who must not be named. Yeah, I'm not. We're not gonna name him. I don't know if it was Piper. Maybe it was Piper. Oh, that's, um, 
Hollywood uh, Steam. NW Hollywood. No, Wolfpack. Why, why, did, I say, why did I say Hollywood? Oh, look at this. Hulk Hogan's on fire. I said NW Hollywood Sting. That's a... That's a botch. Oh, look at these graphics. That kind of reminds me of the WrestleMania 6 intro where, uh, where, uh... I think they kind of did the same thing. I know Ultimate Warrior put out his, uh... Put lasers in his eyes somewhere. I think maybe in the Superstars intro. Let's see, let's do a Battle Royal. Let's see, what... What stage? Oh, I like Bash at the Beach. The thing I like about WCW at this time was they... they so they, they were very careful, or they, they took special attention to the stages that you you, uh, you would see every month. That, that's appreciated. Super Brawl 7? 8. Sold out, sold out doesn't look that great. It, it, it was an incredible intro. I, I, I like it a lot. That's a lot more... Uh, that was better than the No Mercy or WrestleMania 2000 intros. Let's do Starcade. And, uh... Let's see, how many people... Oh, I don't think we have time for 40. Let's do, uh, 24. Let's do Random. And now... We can we choose uh, our roster. Let's see who's in this. Scott Norton. I, I like Scott Norton. Oh, this and he's bald. Bagwell, Bishop. <laughs> look at Bishop. Look look at Bishop. He's shirtless and he has like an eight pack. That's that's incredible. The NWO Red, I guess they couldn't say Wolfpack. There's Nash and Sting, Luger, Savage, Conan. Makes sense. Raven's Flock with <laughs> Reese, Sick Boy, Lodi. Then WCW. With, uh, with a misspelling of Fit Finley. Glacier. I wonder if Glacier has the outfit. Yuji Nagata. I, I like Nagata. Nagata had like a freaking incredible match with uh, Minoru Suzuki this year. I mean, think about that. He always says he's 52 years old. But he had one of the best, best matches of the year with uh, Suzuki. At least during this lockdown. Like it was easily the best uh, lock, uh, the the best match of uh, the lockdown era, I guess. I haven't seen their second match though. I don't know how that one went. New Japan events, it, it, unless it's like a really big show, I, I don't stay up to watch because it 3 a.m. start time. That's just too much for me. Oh, so this is like the special roster. Aki Man was is supposedly Misawa. Somebody in the um, the chat said that. Shogun. Executioner who looks. Uh, moving on. Doctor Frank. Jekyll. Is this supposed to? Oh well, yeah, that's Steve Williams. That's pretty easy to uh, figure out. Maya Inca Boy. This I don't know. Let's see if I can know by their mannerisms. I don't know. Who's Executioner? I... Frank is, uh... Jumbo Sharuda? Maybe. The Yeti is not in this game.
Executioner's Kobashi? Huh. I'll go ahead and choose uh, Aki Man. Oh, I'm, I'm. Oh, we're supposed to choose a randomly? Or I could choose the first four, I guess. Let's see. Who would I want Masawa to face? Let's uh, do Finley. F I N L E Y. Glacier? Well, I want to see if he, uh, they have the Glacier entrance. And uh, Nagata. I like Nagata. Let's see. That, that's the WCW Nitro theme. Hey, Hyunda. Hey, Hyunda has a pose. That, that's nice. That's cute. Just don't pick Conan for the original opponent, and you will probably return as Conan if you get eliminated. I guess they like Conan? I don't know. Pepsi Man. <laughs> Might be Pepsi Man. It kind of looks like, like Pepsi Man. I know there was a game out during this time that was based on Pepsi Man. Glacier doesn't even have his entrance. Not, no outfit. The lights are still on. Blood is not running cold here. This is a very uh, disappointing entrance. It's sad. And he does his karate stuff, but not over. Not over for me. Glacier inexplicably has the Hayabusa taunt on the ramp. Yeah, I, I assume that many people here do not have their entrance themes. Look at this. Oh yeah, counter Aki man. Come on, Matt, Masawa. I like this music. Oh, so NXT's numbers are in apparently. Rank 65. 619,000. That's pretty low. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Aki Man is very cool so far. I, I don't know, both were way down this week. Uh, AEW was way down. I was hoping they would be up a little bit more. Yeah, I, I, this is. It, I think it's apparent that uh, AEW and NXT, this is the, uh, the thing everybody watches. This is the stuff people pay attention to. I don't know if it's just because I'm in a bubble or something, but that uh, Wednesday is the night to watch wrestling. Mondays, not so much anymore. Fridays, not so much. AEW's numbers, I think they were like uh, in the high 700s. I wonder how the quarter hours did. Oh. Flush right in the face of Finley. That's cool. Seven hundred and ninety two thousand. That's apparently the AEW number. So seven hundred and ninety two to six hundred and fourteen. Yeah, that's a uh... It's a pretty 
solid win for uh, AEW. Look at these kicks. Six hundred eighteen. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen the official list. I'm just going by what you guys say. So hopefully they're the right numbers. If not, you can disregard what I'm saying. But apparently, uh, uh, AEW won this week. So I don't know what it means though, because starting next week, uh, things are gonna be different. Oh, we're looking at Dragon What? Oh. We're already getting Hollywood Hogan. Yeah, starting next week, everything changes for for a while, I guess. I know, uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, AEW is uh, going to be on uh, going head to head with Takeover. That's interesting. I haven't seen anything involving NXT in a long time, but, and, you know, I don't hear bad stuff about it, but reading about it, is, it just feels like a weird show, like, like there's a fireball angle, there's, uh, that, that Pat McAfee stuff I, I hate, because it's absolutely not what got me excited about takeovers. You know, there's not a lot of, I, there's a lot of great talent, but there's nothing there that's making me go, well, I have to watch NXT. Look at Finley grabbing his head like that. That's weird. Like his neck is broken or something. I kind of like this combination meter. I don't think that was in uh, No Mercy. Okay, so for this, I, I guess you do have to eliminate people over the top rope. Last week, I, I learned that in, a, in No Mercy, you, it was like by pinfall or something. Hogan, go away. Oh, so you can pin. That's weird. There. That should do you in. Oh, it's a rope break. The favorite of Aki. The favorite thing Aki loves to do. Rope breaks. Oh, I eliminated Hogan. Now there's Nash. Ha. Huh. This would never happen in real life. Hollywood Hogan would not be like the first person eliminated in a battle royal. Or second. Looks like AEW nearly tripled. NXT in 18-49. There's Reese. The Yeti. Super Ninja. Oh, come on. Big Ron Stud. Oh, there. Just gave Kevin Nash a German suplex. I don't think he'd ever take that in real life, but... This is why this is a, a video game. Man, triple in 18 to 49. I mean, even Raw's losing to AEW in that demographic. That's 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 something. I don't know if they'll ever get like up to the the um, actual numbers of Raw, but if they're beating that Raw in that demographic, I mean, that's not great for WWE. really tells you how interested uh, some demographics are and some aren't with WWE. 
This is a lot. I'm trying to build momentum, but then everybody's just staring at me. That is true. NXT this week did not put out a great, you know, this is what we're having next week. They didn't do, have, do a great job of uh, building towards uh, their show this week. AEW, for their credit, they, they put on a great... They had a great uh, promo thing uh, last week. That debate stuff. I thought that was really good. Especially uh, uh, Orange Cassidy towards the end. Uh, he cut a really good promo. I think all that build helped... Uh, well, I mean, I thought I would have done better with that with uh, that match. So I don't know. I mean, they won, obviously, but oh, there we go. No broke break. There, that, you won't get a rope break for that. Let's see. Oh, kick out one. Now, opinion about Royal, well, that's how they did it with the Aki. Aki rules, I guess. Uh, but technically in Japan, I think that's also a, a rule with the Bell Royals. So I think that's why it, it's, it's in there. Yeah, don't get me started on the Velveteen Dream stuff. Uh, that's... that... Tone deaf. I mean, what, what, what... It's tone deaf stuff. Uh, let's not use that term in the chat room. I don't know if there's a mod there. But, um... Yeah, I, I'm not gonna dwell too much into it other than... You know, a lot of these people that got uh, suspended or, or have been off TV for a long time, they're eventually going to come back. And, and I don't want them to, but that's the reality of things. They are going to... Oh, crap. Oh, but the feet got up. Damn. Yeah, a lot of these people are... I mean, time is going to help them in the long run and eventually a lot of them will be back and uh, I don't know I think that's what helped Velveteen that he got he got that in that, in that car accident and he conveniently was away for about a month six weeks and now he's back it's not it's not great I don't know It is scummy. I, in this game, it's like when they sell, like they hold their head very weirdly. Like, look at Nash, look at Glacier. Both their heads are like broken or something. Oh, I like that pit. Ah, rope break. Now Reese has it too. Everybody's neck is broken. Oh crap. You know, I can't comment on WWE's investigation. But, um... I don't know. I, 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 all, I don't know anything about the investigation. Maybe they didn't find anything. I, I don't know for sure. All I know is, is that he has backers there. He has backers. And when you have friends in high places, uh, things can be looked the other way. I, I don't know if that's the case here. Maybe it's, maybe it's not. But I don't know. Just putting it out there. I'm not gonna pretend like like I'm a uh, 
Okay, I'm somebody that talks to a lot of people, like uh, Brian or Dave, or so, so maybe they know more than I do, but that's uh, just my thoughts on that situation. Is that Gilberg? No, that, that is the real thing. That That is Bill Goldberg. Is Gundertaker 10 a troll? I have no idea. Apparently there's no mods around, so uh... I don't know. I hope you all behave. THQ man different than uh, Akiman or are they both Masawa? I just like the idea of Masawa being up Kevin Nash. That's fun to me. Yeah, it's probably just Akiman's alternate costume. Are there any new updates on the AEW video game? Not that I know of. I would love to know more information on it. Um, I don't know, I guess uh, it's not coming out anytime soon. Otherwise we'd hear something. I don't know if it's on hiatus due to uh, COVID and all that because uh, some video games have Wow, kick out at one. Well, I can't pin Goldberg. It's gonna be hard. Game still looks better than WWE 2K20. Uh, it runs better. I can tell you that. That game was a total mess. It's so sad. I, I saw the trailer for a Battlegrounds yesterday. And I don't know if it looks like really great. All I know is, is, is that it looks a lot better than uh, 2K20. I will have a, uh, have a uh, something on it here. Maybe do a review. We'll see. I'll try and get a review copy. Just keep eating those elbows. Look, oh, got at one. What the hell? Does anyone know if Kenny Omega is playing UFC 4 today in the UFC Twitch channel? I, I heard something about that. I don't know if it's today. I know he's uh, I know he's uh, playing it for like some sort of tournament. The Bella Twins are on that too. I kind of want to see how that goes, but I will forget eventually, and I, I won't watch it. But no, oh well. No, I've never played the TNA video game. I don't know if it's good or not, but uh, that those graphics look very. I I, th I think that game looked graphically looked very great. They finally eliminated Nash, and now it's uh, British Bulldog. Okay.
There is a UFC 4 game and it's out like very soon. I played the first UFC game that EA made. Uh, I haven't played anything else. I might, I might play, play it on here. Again, like Battlegrounds, I'll, I'll see if I can get a, a copy. A review copy. I don't know if I'd be good at it, but I'd uh, at least try. Oh. Glacier is gone. Larry Zabisco. <laughs> Look at that face. They probably would have, I think for the TNA game, they, they would have made a sequel. But I think it came out right as, uh, as, uh, who developed it? Uh, Midway. That was right as Midway closed. And, uh, nobody took up the license. And, which is weird because you think they would. Because video game, uh, wrestling video games are usually very popular and usually, usually sell well. But, uh, for whatever reason, this one didn't. But also, TNA is not, like, a strong name anyway. I think it came out around 2008. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get a special. Nope. reversed it. Oh crap, no. No, 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 no. There we go. Oh, that completely missed. Akiban almost got eliminated. Oh, that almost took him out of the ring. That would have been cool if it did. Oh, but he, I missed my kick. Why did WWE not use the name All Stars 2 instead of Battlegrounds? I think that they're uh, stylistically very different games. I think uh, All Stars was a little bit more cartoony. This is also cartoony, but not as much. Also, All Stars wasn't like that popular of a game anyway. So it's, it's not it's not like a live or die thing if uh. If it's not called All, All Stars 2. Take off my earphones. I need new earphones. So let me turn down the volume on my earphones. That's a too loud. There we go. I just feel like I can hear myself better without very loud earphones. Like blaring music. But the music in this game is really good. Battlegrounds is cartoony, but it looks obvious that they used WWE 2K models and mess around with the proportions. All Stars went heavy with the models to make everyone look like an action figure. That's true. The, the, I remember the models in All Stars, and they looked super jacked. Like, yeah, like those uh, Galoob toys in the 80s. That's what remind, well, that's what uh, All Stars reminded me of. Battlegrounds, it's it's not like that. It's a, uh, it's cartoony, but it's different. Yeah, even Ric Flair was jacked, and Ric Flair is not a, uh, is not a natural bodybuilder. Hello, Renegade Jerry, Jerry.
I, I completely botched. I completely botched. I, I, blo I botched seeing block. I said botched. I botched. Botched. That's a, that's a new one. Okay, Renee. I'll just go to Renee. That, that's easier to say. <laughs> Jericho just put out a tweet of a GIF. What is a GIF or GIF? I'll, I'll, I'm going to say GIF. A GIF with Keith Lee getting burned with the tag Demo Burn. That's, uh. Nah, that's kind of mean. I, I like Keith Lee. I think Keith Lee uh, has a very big future. I think I think even Vince McMahon likes him. I don't think he's going to be a like a Umberto Carrillo or one of those guys that ends up getting a push then gets the motor to main event. I think he has a brighter future than that. I don't mean because he got burned in the face. I worry about Gargano. Look, you, you know, for Wednesday, I uh, I don't watch NXT. I, I cover AEW for the site. I do uh, most of the news I do is for the uh, it's for AEW. I cover all the AEW stuff. Uh, Josh, Josh Nason helps me sometimes. Actually, he does most weeks. He does the next week posts and all that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I don't watch NXT. That, that's my point. But I, I feel like with Gargano, I don't think he should be on NXT anymore. But at the same time, if he gets called up, he's like doomed. He has like a worse future than uh, than Mustafa Ali or or Umberto or any of these guys. I, I just think he will be death on the main roster. Uh. But then, the thing is, he's been in NXT for like five years. So what exactly do you do with Gargano? Uh, it's, it's very tough. It's very tough because he is doomed. But he's also stale where he's at right now. Like this heel, sh this, this heel stuff with him, I'm not getting it. I don't think it's interesting. Finn Balor is another one who's just... A heel, insider heel, doesn't do anything for me. There's a lot of these guys who are there, but can't go anywhere else, so they they're kind of stuck, and it's just weird. Gar There's a lot of things going against Gargano. He's like a naturally really good babyface. I mean, when he was a babyface, he was a damn good babyface. The thing is, WWE doesn't want baby f baby faces. They want, I don't know. <laughs> they don't know how to book baby baby faces anymore. So if he goes on there, he's like a baby face. He's gonna lose a lot and not get over. But also, if he's a heel, I I don't know. I, I don't think he'd do that great as a heel either on the main roster. I uh. He's short. Good promo. Great worker. But he's short. And he... I, I don't think he has... And, and this is not me. This is me being like... Putting my WWE hat on. I don't know if he has like the look that... WWE would want to like push a guy. And that, that's, that's not me saying that. I'm saying like look this is what how WWE thinks. And I, I, th I think they're going to look at Johnny Gargano and go, hell no. Oh, shooting star press. I, I always get surprised when they, they do that. I don't think it's so much even size. I, th I think it's just, I don't know, it's, it's just him. Something about him. I don't think... A lot of WWE creative would get. Uh, somebody said what? Uh, Balor? Balor, I mean, he's like. 
He's in the spot Gargano would be if he were called up to the main roster. Because Valor was called up and they, they tried with him, but they, eventually they got bored with him and they didn't do anything with him. So he's now back on NXT and he's a heel. I don't think it's working. But he's a heel and he's not terribly over. He's just kind of there. He's going nowhere. Ciampa, uh, kind of in the same boat. I think he would have a better shot because I think he's a really good promo. I think he's a, he's better suited for the main roster than Gargano, but uh, he's also short. And I th and you know, you know I'm, uh, it's not me pointing out all of his flaws, but the problem is WWE likes to exploit flaws instead of hide them. And I think that's going to be a detriment to his career. Come on, Larry. Damn it. There. Take that, Goldberg. Oh, I'm absolutely not going to be able to pin him. Or maybe. No. Yeah, Acumen does a spin Rooney. It's very impressive. The thing with Eddie and Kurt Angle is that they were spectacular promos and they both got over tremendously because of their promo ability and because of their work. Gargano I think is a very good promo when he's a face, not so much as a heel. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't see a Guerrero or a Kurt Angle in Johnny Gargano. Charisma was off the roof. Oh shit, I almost got pinned. I lost my concentration for a minute. And we haven't even made that far. We made it 30 minutes. We've only eliminated a few people. But yeah, uh... A. Guerrero... Uh, like, completely improved on his promo ability. Like, I remember in WCW, he was not that great. And he went to WWE and he improved like 10 times. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. And then in that last run, he just totally got it. And he was an incredible babyface. He was an incredible heel. And of course, he's like one of the smoothest workers of like all time. Yeah, I, I mean, he got, he, I, I mean, if he didn't get over in WWE, he wouldn't have gone over anywhere. Is Goldberg programmed to be unpinnable? I don't know. Let's see, STF. No. Thanks, Larry. Monkey flip. Yeah, yesterday I was talking about Kushida. And as somebody who's like a big New Japan fan, it's uh, kind of sad to see him where he's at now. Because uh, a few years ago, he was like one of the best workers in the world. Easily. He, he, I mean, before Hiromu, before all of that, he was like one of the best junior heavyweights uh, out there. And when he got signed, I was always kind of not looking forward to it because 
I never thought he had the charisma that WWE would want. And sure enough, I mean, he's struggling even in NXT to get over. And I, it's, it's, his charisma just doesn't translate to WWE. I think that was always going to be his problem. And, you know, he's short, except he's very short. And, uh, He's on 205 Live. I don't even think he's on 205 Live. He's not even like a... He's like there, but he's not like a pushed guy in the cruiserweight division. Just crazy when you think about just how far he was a few years ago. And now he's just not... Not in anybody's plans. That's a big fall. And I don't know if it's because... He genuinely wanted to be like a push guy in WWE, or maybe he just wanted to move to America and make money. I mean, that's what Nakamura did. Look, look Nakamura uh, has not had a stellar WWE run. He had a bunch of great matches in New Japan, but in WWE, he has been taking it easy. You know, I don't blame him. You got you gotta make your money. Make your money somewhere where you don't have to kill yourself. Because in New Japan, it's it's a tough style, and it takes a physical toll on your body. But uh, hey, if you if you wanna just go to America and, and work there and not have to worry about destroying your body, go for it. Well, why not? But, you know, for Nakamura, that's easy because, you know, he's so charismatic, naturally charismatic, that I think he, his kind of charisma translates anywhere. And so he's going to get over no matter what. Kushida does not have that and would struggle on the main roster if they even put him on the main roster. And he, his, his uh, standings there are not as great as Nakamura's. Do I like Jeff Jarrett? Uh, sure. I, I don't have any problem with Jeff Jarrett. I think it sucks that, that TNA like erased his tape library. I know he's in court with a uh, anthem over that. I think that sucks ass. I would be pissed too if somebody deleted all my master tapes. If you wanted to come to America to wrestle, then AEW would have been a, a better choice. Uh, depends on money, and also and also the the allure of WWE it, I think is uh, much stronger because I mean that's that's everybody's dream, or was everybody's dream growing up to to work in WWE. Like, if you wanted to go somewhere where you can have great matches, then yeah, you, you, you sign with the AEW. The AEW is not a sure thing. I mean, they're doing great in the ratings. They they, they, they are gaining momentum. I mean, it's it's not like they are struggling. I mean, everybody's struggling, but I, I mean, they're, they're not in trouble. Like, closing down tomorrow. But at the same time, they are still new. And WWE's been there. For four years, for decades, a lot of that through their own design, but you know they're there. So I, I don't think uh, I don't think AEW is like straight away the the top to choice for for those who want to travel internationally and work in the U.S. I think I think it's WWE still. Judging by those ratings, I mean that could change. <laughs> that could change soon. I don't know. I still don't think we're close to the day where AEW like beats Raw in like total viewers. I, I still think we're way off from that. But the the numbers in the last few weeks have been very interesting.
Ooh, oh, right in the face of Goldberg. That's awesome. Oh, he got up. What the hell? He's flat in my face. Uh, that, that, and that's right, and that's why I would never say, you know, I have a lot of problems with WWE. And, I mean, it's, it's very clear what their problems are. I mean, I think this last year has demonstrated that to a obscene degree. But, I would never tell anybody, you know, don't go to WWE. Because that is where you make your money. It's, it's where you make your money. Hello, Wumi? Wumi? It's happy, it's nice to see you today, too. Who else from AEW do you think will wrestle in New Japan once the COVID is over? Oh, who got eliminated? Did I get eliminated? Who's Hanzo Man? Oh, I don't, I think he's new. But to answer your question, Soul Assassin, um... I don't know. You know, with uh, with Moxley and and all those, um, they're free agents, and, and they put in their contract that they wanted to wrestle for AEW. I don't, I don't think just anybody can wrestle for AEW. I think you have to put it in your contract. Oh, I did make Goldberg submit. <laughs> I, I I didn't even pay attention. I, I was talking about whatever. I just absent-mindedly submitted Goldberg on a WCW uh, video game. That was before that they before they did the the stupid uh, angle where he lost. They killed their business for good. Oh no no no! no. Okay. Uh, FTR maybe. But you know what, New Japan's tag team division, uh, not strong. Is New Japan still doing English commentary during COVID? Yes, they are. They just aren't doing it live. There's a video on demand stuff, I, I think the day after, or at least close to it. I uh, don't think, uh, oh. I don't think that will go live anytime soon. Japan's numbers are not great. We can't even talk about our numbers. So I don't think I'm going to do live anytime soon, but in the meantime, they're, they're doing video on demand uh, replay or uh, commentary. We'd love to see Juice Robinson in AEW. Um, he's out with an injury. That's why he hasn't been on the on the New Japan America shows. But I, don't know, I, I think his place is New Japan. I don't think he's going to go anywhere else. Oh, there's a giant look in the giant's face. I love the giant's face. Is it good commentary? Uh, yeah, I, I like Kevin Kelly. Kevin Kelly is is very good as job. He he's very smart and he does his he does his work. Uh, Don Cal Don Callis, I don't think calls those shows anymore. I think uh, they had Gino Gambino, who's also very good, and uh, Chris Charles Car Chris Charlton, who's also very very good. They all complement each other very well. Oh, I got eliminated. Who am I playing guys? Is it six spot? Oh, it's, it's a <laughs> Randy Savage. <laughs> I like that I confused him for a six spot. I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah, Acuman's gone. I didn't even pay attention to how he got submitted. I'm just here to busting out moves.
So let's see if I can eliminate him. Get to the floor. No, no, oh, wait, no, no. Oh, shit. Oh, now they're all going after me. Including the ninja. That's bad. I know somebody did, you, you did say you, uh, it was going to be Conan, but no, it's, it's Macho Man. And the, the Lucha Brothers, I don't think I've ever been in New Japan. They are AAA guys, so, so they would uh, not be. Or were they? Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they were AAA guys, or they are, they're, they're still AAA guys. You do a jackknife power bomb from the top rope with Kevin Nash in this game. I kind of have to figure out how to do that. Uh, yeah, I am Macho Man now. The CPU uh, chose me to do that. Uh, to be Randy Savage. That's well, already going to be two. That, this hour went by fast. But I'll stay on for a little while longer. I'm not doing anything. Today is my one day off because this is the one day where there's no wrestling. And, and somehow I, I feel like soon that's not going to be it. That, I, that there's somebody's going to add something on Thursdays. And I'm going to be pissed off because there's too much wrestling to cover and it uh, drives me nuts. Like every day there's a show, I mean Monday's Raw, Tuesday's Impact, Wednesday is, I mean, is, is everything, Thursday has nothing, a Friday has Smackdown, Saturdays are pay-per-views, Sundays are pay-per-views, it, it, there's some tough ass weeks, I mean in, just in terms of covering news, it can get very daunting, it can get very uh, just very full uh, of uh, I and mean, I'm, I'm always busy always busy oh crap I just got eliminated and I'm gonna be sick boy yeah I'm really gonna be sick boy Scott Vick maybe the brother of uh, Katie I think that was going to be the storyline to bring him in, well, wasn't it? Wasn't the storyline going to be that he was going to be like Katie Vick's brother or something out for revenge against Kane? And maybe that's like an urban legend or something, but that's why I always saw it as. I, I, you know, he was in development for a long time. You met The Undertaker and Paul Bearer in 1995. That, that's pretty cool. Was it a positive experience? I, I, I think... I think it's, it's cool. I, I like Paul Bearer. Undertaker, I mean, obviously is... There you go. Ooh. Ooh, excuse me. If I sit in one place for too long, I get exhausted for some reason. I think that's a sign I don't get enough sleep. Oh well. I'll, sl I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> I just eliminated, uh, what's his name? That's DDP. I'm trying to figure out how many people are left. I don't know. I don't know who this ninja guy is. I, based on his style, I have no idea. Maybe it's, a. Uh, you know, he kind of reminds me of uh, Sayama. I kind of get that vibe. Uh, the original Tiger Mask. I kind of get that vibe. I, I don't know for sure.
You, you know what? I'll tell you the one person I saw WrestleMania weekend last year. It was uh, Marco Stunt and his brother. I think a few other people. Oh, that was cool. It was nice. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to break kayfabe. But that's, uh... I did make Marco stunt briefly. It was nice. Because we were staying... In a, uh, apparently all the GCW guys stayed at the same uh, building where we were staying for that weekend. So apparently all the GCW guys were there. So that's the story. Marco stunt. No, Marco stunt is a uh, is small. I can confirm that. Then again, I'm taller than most of the. Most guys, uh, well, not most guys. I'm not six foot five or whatever, but I'm taller than Brian Alvarez for sure. Yeah, I'm not six foot five. I, th I think I'm like five foot nine or ten. I don't think I'm six feet. I haven't measured myself in so long. And I think I might have... I, I someday feel like I'm going to be like shrinking a few inches because I sit in a computer all day and compress my spine and I think that's not helpful to, to being tall. DDP yoga, yeah, I need to take some sort of yoga or something. After the next elimination, I'm going to call it a day. But in the meantime, look at the giant's face. We can't stop looking at the giant's face. He's like perpetually smiling and while, while selling his ribs. Look at that. Shoulders to Torelli. The giant kind of does look like Vinny here. Kind of. I mean, I keep seeing those, uh. They low blow me, asshole. I only say that because I, I saw. I've been watching those things in between Wrestling Observer Live. And, uh. You know what you do to deserve a winner? I'll, I'll keep going until everybody's eliminated. We need, we need to do the right thing. We need to determine a winner here. Even if it goes for another hour. But yeah, I was, I've been watching those uh, videos with Brian and Vinny while they took through their house and stuff. And Vinny has long hair and he looks like, he looks like a Kevin Nash. Kind of. He looks like... He, I'm going to point out a very obscure person and I, I don't think anybody would know unless you're like a big OVW fan but Vinny in those uh, videos looks like uh, Russ McCallow from OVW like very, way back in like 2001 like he was like a very tall guy with hair that kind of looked like Kevin Nash but he couldn't work or anything he wasn't very good I ended up getting cut because he was, I don't know, he just didn't have it. But Vinny kind of looks like him. Kind of. 
That was that was like the first person I thought of for some reason. Vinny would get the reference of uh Vinny would get it though, because both of them uh watched OVW a bunch of uh for a bunch of years. Cause that was the show everybody liked back in like two thousand two, two thousand three. I would remember reading the old uh, Figure Four weeklies and reading the OVW reviews, and Brian just getting furious whenever somebody got called up to Raw or SmackDown because, like, they would put the two, the top feud, like they had Doug and Danny Basham like join together as a team when they were having like this epic feud in OVW. They had Matt Morgan do a stuttering gimmick, even though he was like one of the best promos there. Or just and, and you know there's Jillian Hall with the mole. There was like a lot of weird shit during that period. The Cornette Davis era. I mean Danny Davis. I, I think he sold it to Al Snow very recently. But Jim Cornette was there from like '98, to like 2005 when he got fired for. Uh, Slapping Santino. Thank you, El Looney, for tuning in. Uh, it's it's nice chatting with all of you. I'm happy to talk about anything. While we go through this big battle royal. I, I mean, in terms of just gameplay, uh, Nitro, uh, Revenge. Revenge is, is pretty good, it's pretty solid. It's pretty much like No Mercy, but like, it's WCW, so I, I mean, that's cool. N the Nitro theme was nice, hearing the Nitro theme. Has Jericho entered yet? No, Jericho has not entered. Did WCW ever you have it have a farm league like WWE with OVW? Uh, I know that they used like some sort of NWA territory towards the end. I think it was like Wild Side or, or something. I think that's where they got like AJ Styles and Air Paris and, and those guys. But I mean the power plant. They had the power plant and. That's where they train guys, and I don't know. The power plant does have like a stellar record. They hired like a bunch of guys that looked co cosmetically looked great, but none of them were like great workers. Goldberg, I guess you can say, is like the power plant's best pupil because he got over. But his matches were always very short. But when he wrestled, he was fine. Yeah, I mean, there's a famous story with Batista where I think uh, they, they said that they never taught him how to wrestle because all he did was like calisthenics and Stan was training and stuff. And, I don't know, if I, if I go to like a wrestling school, obviously you need to work on cardio. Like if you want to like try out for WWE, like the number one thing you need to do is cardio because they will work you out. But if you go to training school, you also need to like wrestle. But yeah, that, that's my advice to those who, when, whenever they start hiring again. As far as what you need, uh, you need uh, you need stamina. You need you need to make sure you have your cardio. Is this test of strength? This is new. I'm winning. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. Oh. That was a nice exchange. 
For some reason, I can't pin DDP. Oh, there we go. There's DDP. Here's Disco Inferno. <laughs> Look at that smile. Already having a bunch of ideas on stuff. Our plant also has legendary Waldo. I don't remember a Waldo. Waldo who? Oh, look at that. There we go. That was an easy look at the Parker. He's like, I already have a chair. I'm going to use it. And then the chair disappeared. There's a giant black suplex to the giant. Uh, some sort of buster. Oh, kick out of two. Disco is always trash talking AEW. Well, yeah, I, I mean, it's it's the thing with these podcasts, like with Jim Cornette and everything, it, it's like their, their goal is to bring in viewers and stuff. And I, I mean, obviously, they're catering towards anti AEW people, which is a crowd that I guess is big enough to where if they don't review AEW, if they don't go after AEW, people won't tune in. I, 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 guess, I guess that's why they, they do it. Waldo was Louis Thoreau? Thoreau? From the BBC, he made a documentary for the power plant, cut a hilariously bad promo as Waldo. Huh. And was it like part of a documentary, or...? I w I'd like to see a documentary on the, the power plant. I know they did several. Oh. I'm eliminating people left and right. Look, here's Shogun. I'm just eliminating as many people as I can. I am now in full elimination mode. Ooh. Sick Boy was underutilized. Uh, he wasn't very good, if I remember correctly. He had a cool look. And he spent many years in OVW, and I, I don't think it was ever brought up. Ducking me. Come on, get eliminated. Oh, there we go. Uh, Hawk Hannah. Who's this? Was it him that went to ECW and feuded with RVD for a minute? No, that was uh, Scotty Riggs. Oh! There, there, there's my run of Sick Boy. Now I am Crush. Brian Adams. Brian Adams doesn't look like Brian Adams. 
Yeah, but yeah, that was Scotty Riggs who, uh, you know, when Russo came into power and a bunch of people got released, uh, he went to ECW and as far as I know, he did that feud with uh, RVD and then that was it. Maybe there's more. I, mean, I, think, I think he stuck around until the end. You know what? I've never played any of those ECW games. Uh, the, uh, the ones that Claim made when they lost the WWF license. I've never. I think there was two of them. I know one was released for Dreamcast. Did you see the pick of Tony Khan in the crowd at an, at, an, at an ECW show? I did not. But I know Tony Khan is a big uh, wrestling fan, obviously. I mean, I know he's a big observer reader. I know, I, I remember when he got, his name popped up for this AEW project. We were looking into, like, like how does he know Dave? And as it turns out, he sent reports to uh, house shows. I, I know at least one. Uh, like he was sending reports to house shows for WWE house shows. Uh, like he, he's a big fan. He's been a fan for decades. That's cool. It's nice to see somebody that is a creative force in a promotion and is not like being brought back for his 445th run as a creative top creative guy it's, it's refreshing there's a La Parka gone and there's Conan His dad went with him to the ECW show. That's a uh, that's amazing. To think somebody who went to like the ECW arena has like the kind of yacht that uh, that uh, Shad Khan has. I remember looking up like who this guy was, and one of the things I first saw was like a. Uh, like the super expensive yacht that he was, I think he was selling. Maybe got a new one. I'm oh, sorry, Conan. Oh, so we're down to three. So we are closing in on this. Let's see if I can win this as Crush. Oh, look at that. The world needs more Shane McMahon. Um, how can I put this nicely? Uh, I don't need to see Shane McMahon as a weekly character. I was just about done uh, when uh, he finally left for a while. That gimmick of being the best in the world was so lame. But, I'm sure he's a nice guy. In fact, in fact you, you know, you always hear the stories of, well, Vince McMahon's weird, but Shane McMahon was cool to hang around with, so I'm sure he's a very fun guy to be around. Aki is dope, you get the host. Okay. Hello, Dark Elite Eric. How are you? 